Jesus throughout his ministry, not only at the end, was embodying a kind of radical alternative to the temple, which he seems to have believed it was his vocation to do. So when he arrived in Jerusalem, it was him and it was the temple, and who was representing the will of God and the coming kingdom of God. And so on top of that, we have in Judaism already at the time, quite a popular dissent from the temple and critique of the temple. Not only the Essenes, but a lot of the poor people felt that the temple was an oppressive structure which the high priests ran to their own advantage. It's noticeable in Josephus that at the start of the war in 66, the first thing the rebels did when they got hold of the temple was to burn the records of debt. That's like somebody going into the central bank and uh, exploding the computer that's got all the overdrafts on it. You know, So the temple a lot of people thought the temple was a bad thing. But Jesus is going beyond that and is saying, God is now doing something which is making this system redundant. Now, why does his action mean that? Turning over the tables of the money changers stopped for a few moments, maybe half an hour, an hour or so, the flow of sacrificial animals which were coming in, being bought. You had to buy the animals there because if you brought a sheep from Galilee, a wolf might nip its ear on the way down and then you have to go all the back, way back and get another one because it wouldn't be pure anymore. It's a way of symbolically stopping the regular sacrificial protest. And what that says is this whole system is under judgment and one day before too long, the system will stop completely because the temple will be destroyed. And the whole of the sequence in Mark's Gospel, from Mark 11, where that happens, through to Mark 13, is all about the temple and its destruction, ending with the discourse on the Mount of Olives, which is Jesus answering the disciples' question, when is the temple going to be destroyed? Now, from that moment on, Jesus' fate is sealed, it seems to me. But what he is doing in the course of that is saying quite radically, what you have in and through my work is the reality to which the temple pointed. Does this mean the temple was a bad thing? And often historians of religion have said, oh yes, it was a kind of an early development. They thought they had to do stuff with the sacrificial system and killing animals and so on. And we've now grown up and we know we don't have to do that, so how stupid were they? Jesus never says that. For him, the temple was a true signpost to God's future. And it is now ripe for destruction, not because it was a bad thing that needed to be abolished, but because it was a true signpost to the reality. But when the reality has come, if people insist only on looking at the signpost, they've missed the point, and they're on the way to ideology or even idolatry. It's rather like if you're trying to show an animal something, a dog something, and you point at the object, the dog looks at your finger instead of looking at the object. In Jesus' day, people were looking so hard at the temple that they couldn't see that he was offering the reality to which the temple pointed. And that's what we then find in the Last Supper and on the cross, Jesus doing the reality to which all along the temple had been pointing.